Canny Cross Conversations, chatting all things Canny Cross and running. Join Canny Cross instructors, me, Michelle, and me, Louise, as we chat to guest experts about dogs and running, sometimes while out canny crossing. Well, thanks for joining us for today's episode. Um, as you probably know, both Louise and I are trained um, canny cross instructors through Dogfit UK. And today we're joined by Gail Walker and Jeanetta George, who set up Dogfit. So we're really pleased to have you on the podcast today. So we thought we'd start by introducing you both. Um, so shall we start? Shall we start with you, Jeanetta? Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> tell us, just tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, just about you and your dog. And Yeah, of course. Um, well, thank you for having us on um, today. So, as, as you know, um, Dogfit started in 2015, actually. Um, and it was down to the fact that at that time, um, whilst the sport was growing, that there was nowhere you could go for really good advice about kits um really good advice about classes taking up classes and actually somewhere you could feel reassured that you were getting the right thing for your dog um when I came to the sport literally my husband bought me a canny cross kit online for my birthday because I'd been talking about looking for a new sport to do with Coco uh, and uh, this canny cross kit arrived and then I thought, oh, I need to actually find out whether or not it fits my dog, how to make a start. I'm not a runner. Um, and there was nowhere you could go. And actually, I did end up linking up with Gail. And that's how I got into the sport. And after we'd been running together for quite a while, and Gail was obviously running before, or canny crossing before me, we then thought there is an opportunity here for people, like-minded people like us to find a central place where they can find out about the sport. And that's really where... Um, the whole thing started. Oh, that's brilliant. Thanks, Jeanetta. Um, should we say hello to Gail then? Because you've come into Canny Cross in quite a different way, haven't you? Yes. Um, hello. Yeah, definitely. I, I was already a big runner, so I used to do a lot of road running. So it was, it was a sport that my husband and I discovered together because we tried um, mountain biking without much success because I'm rubbish at cycling downhill, anything steep. Um, so, yeah, we found something we could do together. And it was one of those things as well. We used to go on, um, do half marathons and then enter marathons. It was anywhere could get and go on a city break because <laughs> we used to love surfing holidays instead. So it sort of evolved from that. We were doing lots of running. And then we got our first dog. And obviously my two great loves, dogs and, and, and my running. And that meant we started to do more off-road running. But I had a dog. This dog was um, a rescue. All my dogs are rescue, actually. And I couldn't really run with him properly because I hadn't discovered Canny Cross at that point. And I remember doing a trail run, a local one in my area, many years ago now. And I was just running at Douglas. And I had no, obviously come across Canny Cross at that point. And I saw this lady with two huskies with wow. proper equipment. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I remember going up to her and asking all about it. She said, oh, yes, it's called Canny Cross. Uh, it's not that many people doing it. But it's quite you know, very niche at the moment. And she said, go online and find information. So I remember going online, I could hardly find anything. And it took me a long time from that point to actually really get into Canny Cross. And I just by luck happened to be doing a trail run, um, a local trail run. And I bumped into this big group doing Canny Cross. And I was like, oh my goodness, this, this is the sport I saw recently, you know, a few months ago when I was doing this event. And what it was, it was a group of people who were training for a local race that was coming up the weekend after called the Hard, um, Harder Snails. And yeah. they were all running for Vigilamentis, which is a charity for visitors. And um, a really lovely group of people. I spoke to them and they said, come and join us. Um, you know, a few days, we're doing another training run. So I took my Ridgeback Doby Cross Red <laughs> and thought she'd be great at this. And uh, she was, borrowed the equipment ran with everyone I'd always remember having that I don't know it was just absolutely brilliant experience of running in the pack with all the people and all the dogs and thought this is the closest I'm going to get to running with a pack of dogs and I remember getting home telling my husband about it and thinking I'm really going to get the kit now I'm really going to get into it and the week following week I did the race I actually took part in the event with with my dog Red um, but like Janetta said it, it was really difficult at the time for me to find information so once I'd done that run and I got my kit, and, it, and the kit I got was, uh, it was passable, you know, it was fine. It was the proper canny cross kit, but I've 
discovered so much more since then and it probably wasn't the best harness for my dog because the way she's built she's super strong and big dog but it was it was great for an entry level and uh but because I couldn't find much more information after that I thought I really want to do this on a regular basis I um started writing blogs about the sport got a local group um going because it'd been sort of there was a local group but it it hadn't been in action for at least a year and there were very few members and I just got in there were some people I met when I did that training run I kept in touch with um and really lovely people there was a couple um Paul and Tanya who are who are really close friends of mine now who rescued a couple of visitors now and we got into running regularly and I used to post about it and then, as I said, writing articles. And that really just started growing organically. And that was the local group that Janetta found. <laughs> and hence we met. And um, I guess the rest is history. <laughs> but it did. It wasn't as easy as now for anyone getting into Pentecost. And we, we've tried to make it as accessible um, as possible and make sure all the information you know, is up there. We've got a, an extensive blog, for example. So, yeah, we're really proud of the fact that we've gone from that just a few years ago to really making it a much uh, more accessible and, and um, promoted sport. Yeah, I think the difference when, when I came to the sport is I came into it as a complete non-runner. I absolutely hated running. Um, uh, any of my friends would have would have told you that the thought of doing 2k was an absolute nightmare and I was convinced that I couldn't run and you know I, w- I was in my kind of late 40s coming to the to try and do something and I think that when I first met Gail I and to so she could check the kit with my dog um, it was really you know, I had it in my head I wasn't a runner I was going to check the kit and then I was going to go off myself and learn how to run with the dog and then go back and join the join a class uh well, it wasn't a class it was just a social group so that you know I nearly didn't go and the only reason I went was to see that Coco was comfortable but actually when I met Gail that gave me the confidence then to go well do you know maybe I'll just try a few steps um and you know after that didn't didn't look back so the fact that people think that they're not a runner is is you know, I'm, I'm testament, having just run the London Marathon, that actually this is absolutely not true once you start canny crossing. Uh, and that's interesting. So why, when you got your dog, why did you think about running? Because you, as you've already said, you're not a runner. So why didn't you just take your dog for walks? <laughs> uh, well, obviously, I did, I did take her for walks, but, but we'd done a few other sports and we'd been gun dog training. And we, um, I realised that gun dog training wasn't the right thing for her either. She's a German pointer. Um, but so very active dog and obviously we were actively walking and all the other things but I think I'd seen something online and I think I saw bike jaw and I thought well maybe the bike jaw is quite interesting but maybe I need to start the canny cross first and learn and learn how to do it I just desperately wanted to do something with her outside that we could do together so really didn't know anything about the sport at all but thought maybe you know maybe we could just do a little bit fiddling around on our own it'll go for a little run or a jog didn't never in a million years did I ever know what was what was ahead um and literally that first time when I met girl and and we checked the cocoa's harness and it was all fine and girl said well why don't you come for a little run with my husband and I <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go for, let's go for a little run and I thought oh, okay I and I was I did I was fit I used to, I was used to ride horses so I was actually quite fit and active so but not running fit um Mm. and I started running with them and I just thought oh my gosh this is amazing and it's that feeling that we all know as as trainers and you guys know you know you can just see when it clicks with someone thinking I'm doing this I'm doing this with my dog and in a way it does it's very similar to horse riding because you are actually doing something with an animal together and the dogs know that they're doing it with you so it's you know the dog you're working together as a team and that's a fantastic feeling and I started running and Coco she was a natural puller I was thinking this is absolutely great (laughs) and I know that in that first session I probably run should I run further than I should do but I was just so stunned by the fact that I was actually running so and it was an amazing feeling so never look back sounds absolutely fab yeah Gail yeah I I mean I I felt yeah I felt for that in terms of the feeling and uh but you know from my personal experience it was um, whilst I was already a runner, it was being able to actually run with my dogs because I've got rescue dogs, as I mentioned, and um, 
you know, not all rescue dogs, they say, have to be attached all the time. But I had a, you know, I've got one dog, a dog that can be reactive. I had a, a dog that was prone to running off when he was younger. And um, this was a brilliant way that I could still run them. <laughs> I could still run them and feel that I was giving them the exercise and the stimulation they needed. But even more importantly than that, and I know a lot of our customers have found this, and that's why Janetta and I really advocate Canning Cross for anxious and react- or reactive dogs, is that Canning Cross is a great way to help socialise dogs in that, in that situation because it's a safe environment for them. And also it gives the owner confidence because, you know, as countless dog trainers will tell you, a lot of it stems from the owner. If the owner's nervous and it feeds down the the lead or the line to the dog, that's not great for the dog. But when it comes to canicles, because the owner can feel confident and safe in that environment, especially with our dog fit trainers like yourselves, who are looking out for that, making sure that they are in that safe environment, it means the dogs have a good time as well. And it's so much nicer than having to have a dog that's, either muzzled or you've got to you know keep them on a close lead all the time they can actually run alongside other dogs at a safe distance and you know it really does give them that confidence so I love it from that perspective for me as well that I've been able to do that with my dogs and I think think where you're both your stories are the similar stories to everyone out there that, that comes across canny cross or always looking for ways to exercise their dogs um you know in a in a, in a different way or you know because we can't let them off all the time De- definitely so how did uh, DogFit come about then for after that? What, what, what happened? Well, I think uh, Gail and I were obviously running the canny crossing together in, in a group with other people as well. And we were obviously talking about some of the, the fact that you couldn't find information, that you couldn't go to one place. And that's where obviously we um, talked a lot about how this could be different and and actually starting a business around it and it was our passion as well and it still is our passion today and and absolutely love the sport but we didn't want to be just another kit supplier so we didn't want to be just you know selling lots of kit making it really confusing for everybody we wanted to make it as simple as possible for for everyone to get into the sport so a, a, a place that they could go to find out um what were the what was the right kit for their dog be reassured that they're buying good quality kit at a really reasonable price. We're trying, you know, dog fits all ethos has always been to, to make things a really you know, good quality, a good price, good value. So things that we would want ourselves, you know, I, I'm always putting myself back into my position that I was, you know, all those years ago. What would I, what would I have taken confidence from, you know, knowing that it's the right kit? Also, where could I go to try a class? with someone that has was qualified so not just someone that said I'm a canny cross trainer you know self-certified we wanted to we we wanted to have a place where people could go they could find whether or not they were in Scotland or they were in Cornwall they could go along and attend a class and get a good quality level of training um that that had been kind of certified by an outside body um and people that were passionate about the sport so between Gal and I, we obviously talked to, you know, we, we spent many months um, talking about how DogFit was going to evolve, how we were going to launch. We actually launched the business at 2015 at DogFest uh, with a demonstration, but we had everything in place. So it wasn't about just the selling the kit. We obviously had some trainers in place, but we also had lots of content and advice for people that we gave away. So we'd all pre-recorded, invested in pre-recording videos with all those frequently asked questions um online advice so people could just go and find out more information before they even committed to doing anything and we've always been completely supportive of every level from whether somebody wants to run 1k or actually go right up to marathon distance um and it's so heartwarming when you know you hear people we get responses from customers now saying you know how brilliant they found something or how helpful or the fact it's even started them canny crossing they're given the confidence to do that so what it's really good you know that the whole sort of ethos of a dog fit and that's basically why I trained trained with you because I like it you know you don't have to be the top of the pack to oh, that sounds good enough top of the pack you know, <laughs> you know a, a really good runner to do it it involves everyone but what do you look for in your dog fit trainers um, quite a lot of things, actually, because I think Janetta just alluded to the fact that we don't just 
take on anybody. It's not just like Joe Bloggs down the road who happens to know how to do Canny Cross. Um, we have quite a process in terms of um, getting people on board. And I always, there's prerequisites we have. And we also, um, I also interview, I mean that loosely speaking, but I have a, a really long conversation with each individual to make sure it's right for us and for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, you passed, you're okay, you passed. Um, but yeah, it's quite, it's quite important to me that the, the person that comes on board not only has the relevant experience, you know, can actually run a canny cross cast, um, but has that the same passion and ethos as us. That's so important because we need to know that if um, whoever's going to classes with whichever trainer, they're going to have a very similar experience. Yes, everyone brings their own um, individual expertise because some of our dog fit trainers are personal trainers, some are dog trainers, um, but they're, they're all um, able to lead exercise classes. And I think a, a big part of it as well is being um, individual centric. So we know that if somebody comes to one of your classes, if they are nervous or anxious in any way, or they haven't, you know, they haven't got the confidence or not, haven't got certain ability, they're not going to be left behind or struggle to keep up with the group. Um, having that structure and that support is really important to people. So we look definitely look for trainers who have that same ethos as us that are going to put the needs of the individual and their dogs first before anything else and make sure they have a good time. I mean, this is meant to be fun. <laughs> you know, it's not, you know, doing a Couch to 5K programme, some people um, who, who say who do it um, outside of Cali Cross can be quite daunting. You still almost like homework. I'm going to tick it off each week. But what we're trying to do is introducing Couch to 5K through Cali Cross by having a bit more fun. You know, learn, you might learn commands along the way. You're going to meet like-minded people it's such a social sport you come away um making some of your best friends in life and that's really special and i also see our dog fit trainers as their extension of dog fit they're part of our dog fit family you know without wanting to sound cheesy but each and every dog fit trainer that we have worked with us you know Jeanette and i are super proud of them because we know they're representing the brand in a positive <laughs> and meaningful way and we know that from the customers you know the feedback we get we get happy customers off the back of it and that's that's so important to us i think also um it's um really important what you say about everyone everyone being inclusive and uh, mm. you do and you do get uh, i always teach to the sort of the worst person if that makes sense and i don't mean mm. worst is the wrong word but but you do because yeah. you want everyone to enjoy it so it's definitely it's really yeah yeah i was not doing a long listening to that as well i mean I, I was really impressed by your kind of interview. I know it's not an interview, but kind of the process of recruiting a trainer because I was coming into it with no canny cross knowledge, really. I was kind of new to the sport with, with my dog, Poppy, um, and having a chat with you and you putting my mind at ease and, and going through that training with you. I feel really confident delivering kind of training to others now. It's been absolutely brilliant. So I'm so pleased. I'm really proud to be part of the Dog Fit family. Um, did you have something to add there, Janetta? Yeah, I think the important thing is that we'd all go out to dinner with all of our trainers. So I think that's <laughs> of, was it like, on you? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe we're our tenth anniversary, but um, it's it's yeah, one that everyone that we feel that it shares our values. But one important point about our training is that both Gail and I have undertaken training to to certify our course. So we haven't just suddenly come up with the fact that, you know, it's a dog fit certified course. Our actual training is certified through SIMSPA, which is the Chartered Institute for the Management of Sport and Physical Activity that's backed by Sport England. And so we've had to have our training assessed and spent many months and a lot of work behind the scene to make sure that how we're training our trainers um, is to the highest level for British sport. So and we're hugely proud of that. Um, you know, it's not, we've not just suddenly given ourselves a certified course. It is, is one that's um, certified in itself. So, yeah. And I think, I think that comes across, you know, with, well, during the training as, a, you know, someone has gone through the training, but also I, th I like to think that it's come across when we we're out there. Absolutely. The we're, we're hugely proud of you all. And um, yeah, and we've, we've got a great community of trainers, which yeah. is growing. Yeah, you're obviously doing a lot of things right because, I mean, you've recently won an award with UK Active, haven't you? So just tell us a little bit more about what that means. 
Um, yeah, it was the UK Active Awards, and it's a really prestigious sporting award. So we were up against some quite big companies. And given we're still fairly fledgling, and we've been, like say, established in six years, and it's a relatively um, small sport in comparison to others, I think that is a real indication of the hard work and you know, recognition of all the, the work we do. And the fact that that people are starting to discover Canicross and understand all the benefits. And I think UK um, um, UK Active are, like I say, they're a recognised sporting um, body you know, that, that award these, that, that give out these awards. And they are looking for people of a high calibre that they recognise. And one of the things they particularly recognised was the work we did during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic. Um, because obviously we had a period where you could either just go out on your own or you could go out in a group of six. So we actually gave away our online Couch 5K programme and we were online giving people the support they needed, really trying to encourage people. And I, and I think there were some huge benefits, not just to, for people to reach a goal, but to give people something to focus on during that time. And... Um, it would have been pretty tough otherwise, so at least to get out with their dogs and when they could go out in a smaller group, it was something to focus on. But yeah, we were recognised for that, so we're particularly proud of that. But I think they also recognised just the, it's not just that well-being piece, because that's a huge piece, I'm going to talk for hours about that. Um, but the well-being piece is so important, but also just the health, fitness, and it's across the, both the pee person and the dog, and, rec- and they recognise that um, how much good it's doing for them. Do you know how much um, Canny Cross increased during lockdown? Because as you said, there was a lot of stuff that you get and, and we'd like to hear a little bit more about what you what you did during lockdown. But mm. did you see it it, it increased drastically? Or? Well, from, from our side, obviously, um, with engagement, as Gail mentioned, we, we gave away a lot of material and supported people online um, through our social media channels. We, we know... Um, you know just by the amount of work that we were doing behind the scenes that the engagement increased we all know that dog ownership increased and there was obviously lots of puppies and things coming through obviously um people were buying kits but that covid year came with its challenges as well because um you know trying to import kits um and as i mentioned before we try and keep our kit really simple not making it too complicated because it doesn't need to be and one of the really important sides of that is we manufacture our own range of affordable kit in the UK, um, and which was very fortunate through that time because we we didn't have supply issues, which we don't now. And that's that's grown and increased. So whilst there are no actual figures on it, um, we know by the amount of work that was going on behind the scenes and, the, you know, the new customers um, that we've got that we're working with. Um, which which has been absolutely great. Um, I think the the only other thing about the whole um, award for UK Active is that we actually put Canny Cross on the map. So for a sporting body that that never even probably knew the sport existed, we're hugely proud to have won the award because, you know, we were up against, you know, big brands and Gal and I had to present online. We had to put through loads of um, case studies, uh, paperwork to, to substantiate what we were talking about you know and even some of the judges had never heard about the sport so it was great for canny cross for everyone in the canny cross world because we suddenly got put on the map and when we went along to actually collect the award it was just a great opportunity to speak to other sports companies about the great sport that we're involved in yeah, and hopefully, um, you know, it'll keep to increase. It will keep increasing. I was going to ask though, do you do you, because we're sort of eighteen months into lockdown, and as you said earlier, puppies were the thing that everyone seemed to buy during lockdown. So we don't canny cross with with dogs until they're a year to eighteen months. So you mm. are, are things. I wonder if things are starting to increase now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm these... sure. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I mean, we're also in what we call official canny cross season because we're coming into yeah. you know into autumn winter so by default you tend to get more people taking up the, the sport or well, certainly um it, although a lot of people think it might be something to, nice to do in the summer it's better for the dogs you know for the cooler yeah. months so it's it's difficult to say there are definitely more dog people getting in touch because i deal with a lot of inquiries that come through directly to us that i then pass on to our dog fit trainers 
And there are a lot I've noticed where people are saying, I've got a dog that's just t- about, it's soon to turn a year or it's just turned a year. And this is something I've heard about Kenny Cross. I've seen, you know, I've read an article in, in my local paper or in, in a sports magazine. And I've heard about you. I've seen your on your website. I'm really keen to get involved. So even from that, I'm seeing there's a lot of younger dogs coming through. And what is really satisfying is that people are thinking about that outlook for their dogs you know it's, it's really lovely and people are actually thinking right I want to do something positive for my dog and you know take up the sport and do something with them and and work towards that goal and and get them out running and they're coming to us because they want to do it sensibly they're actually thinking about getting the right equipment and um starting them correctly in the same way I mean that is definitely something that we feel we've we've had a positive influence over when we first started our company there were you used to always see people out with their dogs attached to a collar um, and their lead running them. As, and especially if the dog's pulling <laughs> on the net. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that, that, this is about education. A lot, it's not yeah. criticism at all. We've all been there, done that. But it's about, I feel that um, what DogFit are doing is just raising that awareness about how you can do that safely. Because these are people who want to go out and run with their dogs. They just don't know the best way to do it. So education is a huge part of what we do. And I think that was also why we were recognised by UK Active. Yeah. And, and and Michelle and I are very much uh, sort of with the education side of it, you know, and that's why we've got this podcast so that we can, <laughs> uh, can, can tell people about all the different aspects of it, yeah. uh, as well as um, looking after ourselves, not just our dogs. So yes. That's, yes. That's the idea. Yeah, I mean, there's still, as you say, yeah, there's still a lot of education to do. So, I mean, we're, we're trying our, it, often at Parkland, like you see, I still see people running with the dogs attached to a collar and it's hard to know whether to go and approach them and you know what to do what 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 would you recommend in that situation yeah I, th- I think as, as Gail mentioned before you know it's not because people you know are being cruel it's just because they don't know any different yeah some I mean not, you know I couldn't help myself but approach someone you know um <laughs> <laughs> but I think if you, if you explain to people and you actually show them a canny cross harness and you show them the benefits of using the correct equipment both for themselves and for their dog you know people will convert they will actually go oh my gosh I am being pulled out of balance I'm this is not great for my dog's neck I think once people understand and obviously as as you guys know as part of your training um, with dog fit and when we go through the different types of harnesses um, it, as soon as people understand and can quite clearly see what the benefits are you know they'll they'll decide that, that actually what they're doing originally is not the right thing so personally I, I wouldn't couldn't stop myself actually chatting with someone I wouldn't say you're not going over to accuse them of anything or being cruel because they just don't know but I think you know an open an open chat of have you heard about Canny Cross have you heard about the kit that you run in um, you know Park Run is, is is absolutely great that they do allow dogs and um, in, in most of them obviously it's not in every single Park Run um and that's great that then hopefully that's something that will continue but it is about the whole education piece of people understanding why they should be running with a certain type of kit and it is actually safer for the dogs as well so we've we've written many blog posts on it and and also contacted part run and um to show them the, the benefits so hopefully that will filter through in time I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm, I'm definitely sure it will. And um, I do happen to go over to people when I see them running, like that, I have to say. <laughs> but nicely, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, part, for, for me, part of it is the excitement of that they haven't discovered it yet. Well, that's and true. And I know they're missing out and I know they'll love it. So it's a bit yeah. of that as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Exactly. Oh, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's been lovely having you both on. Um, and we've we've obviously talked about dog fits values and is there anything else you'd like to particularly chat about before we finish before we finish our chat today I think I think one thing I'd just like people if listening to this to know is that if they really are unsure about and they want to get started and they're not sure what to do do get in touch with us you know get there's getting um you know we can put them in touch with a dog fit trainer in their area we've got all the details are on our website so they go to dogfit.co.uk and then we've got a tab at the top of classes so they can find out about their local trainer 
Um, they can also read loads of articles on our blog. But one thing that we do have, because the, the, the equipment is, is important, and it, for some people it's, it's quite alien. You know, you might think, oh, it's just a standard dog harness, but it's really important to get the right harness for your dog. Um, we sell a variety of harnesses. And so one thing we do have is an online harness consultation form, which they can find easily um, through our, web, our, our website. And we can help them. And so I don't, I always think, I don't want people to think, oh gosh, I don't, I want to get started and just buy something random. But we can actually help people. And we've got loads of sizing um, videos and fitting videos on our YouTube channel as well. And that's a great source because going back to the whole education piece, we've written, you know, we've got hundreds of blogs, blog articles, we've got um, YouTube videos. So we sort of, I would say to people, really go and look into it. But don't, and also, don't be fearful about giving it a go because you can canny trek, you can hands free walk with your dog, you don't even have to run with them. And if you, and I guarantee in a majority, 99% won't look back because it's it's so much fun as you two will vouch for. And if you yeah. join a group, you join a dog fit training, you're going to meet some friends and, and go out and enjoy it socially as well. So, you know, I just say give it a go and give it a try. I, I always love it when I finish a toaster session and the person who's been really fearful at the beginning has the biggest smile. And I think the dog does as well yeah. on their faces. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah no, that's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Jeanetta, sorry. Just yeah, to well, just to, just to finish, and if there's ever a testament to being someone that doesn't run, I am <laughs> <laughs> obviously I'm, Coco is the complete reason that, um, that I'm running and continue kind of to enjoy the social side of the sport. You know, we've made so many friends um, so anyone listening to this that thinks they're not a runner or doesn't have the confidence by going to a dog fit trainer, you will have someone that holds your hand. Um, as a as a company, we are about celebrating all the achievements, even if someone is just, as Gail said, canny trekking. Um, yeah. They're still going out and getting active and, and having fun with their dogs. So, I mean, dog fit has lots in the pipeline that's coming through. So um, whilst we can't go into detail about what's exactly next, I'd say stay tuned for yeah, next year. Exactly. <laughs> or we might have to have you back on then to uh, see what's what's happening, see how far we've gone. Yeah, it'd be our pleasure. Thank you. That's brilliant. Okay. So thank you. Thank you both so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, see you all soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, both. Thank you for listening to Canny Cross Conversations. If there's something you'd like to know about Canny Cross and running, then please get in touch with us at cannycrossconversations.co.uk and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss our next episode.